Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. I've got a game for you today on the map Darkfall. This is going to be a three versus three, and it's right up there on the top end of the average Joe's rankings. Got between 1,100, actually 1,000, and 1,600 rating. Let's go ahead and introduce the players, and then we'll dive directly into this game. On the left-hand side, we have Gently taking Aeon in the air or support slot, depending. Uh, Nekulich as Cybern on the front and sky out taking seraphim on the front this map is small enough that there is technically a support slot but it is not always an air slot because this thing is brutal full front assault all game this is a hilarious game to watch replays on because you never know what is going to happen on the right hand side nexus of reality taking cybern in the support slot supreme burger uef on the front as well as the headphone guy or db or d slash underscore slash or actually that's not slash that's hyphen d hyphen underscore hyphen b we're gonna call him headphone guy um this map has a significant amount of reclaim which means it scales up incredibly quickly you can see we've already got a little bit of a uh, assault going on there engineer reclaiming that mech marine right at the last second surviving with 12 health and he is going to carry on with his reclaim duties on all of the rocks and trees around the map the side plateaus have four mass extractors apiece two here that have to be dropped you cannot edge build that one i don't believe you can however edge build that one although i don't think you can walk units directly up onto it and there is an additional mass extractor point up that away so the terrain is pretty varied. There's a lot of interesting little protrusions and bypasses throughout the map. I don't know who made this one, but whoever did did a pretty dang good job on it. So kudos to the map maker. Let's go ahead and zoom in on some of this action taking place here. Because like I said, this is a full frontal assault map. Units engage the entire time. Already got two strikers and a scout up on the front. There is an ACU sitting at the front of the base though. So no use in advancing on that position. And then we've got all of these guys filling in their bases around the maps. So obviously, we're going to see the air player dropping these side expansions. Hopefully, both of them won't go to the same team. And there's a T1 bomber out for Gently. One observation that I've made when I casted this map once before was, this is one of the rare expansions where you can actually have a full-scale battle on a self-contained plateau because the thing is so freaking big. Um... I've seen both players having multiple land factories on this plateau and basically battling it out over those mass extractors. Radar picked up, some units damaged there with that T1 bomber, grabbing an engineer kill there, and then moving on to greener pastures and brighter targets. Already got a couple of kills on there, two kills, so it is worth the mass already. Anything after this is just gravy, and I spy a delicious Koopa gravy there. Three engineers picked up with one bomb. Looks like it's going to be a hover bomb right on to two more engineers. Nexus of Reality is going to have to do something drastic here. He's got an interceptor out that is going to pick up those, but he's lost a lot of his build power in the back there. Now that I'm looking at it, there is a severe disadvantage to the right-hand side. As far as ranking goes, Nexus and Supreme Burger are both 1100s, if I'm not mistaken, and they're versus a double, basically 1500 on the left side, and the air player is greatly outmatched. So these guys are going to have to go fast and hard right out of the gate to have any chance at all of succeeding. Of course, DB is going to be vital to this team as he is the most experienced and most highly rated player. Not that rating is everything, a lot of times there are some intricacies that don't tell the whole story with the rating thing, but for the most part, if someone's 400 rank points higher, they probably are a at least slightly better player. Alright, Engineer's being dropped right over on the edge here, he'll be able to grab those stones right off the bat and then drop an air or a land factory over there, hopefully on the side where units will be incoming if there is a drop from the other air player. So he'll know about it right there and then and be able to take care of business. That was a nice attempt at a run by, but unfortunately there are four T1 tanks sitting in the back there. Going to pick up those raiders quite nicely. And then on the front line here, we have point defense being built behind some already damaged walls. That will tell me that T1 artillery has already paid a visit to that location. 
Got to reuse the wall structures though, and that will provide a tiny little bit of denial. Looks like Nekulich is building a fairly large grid. <laughs> These four mass extractors are set up for quadruple adjacency, which means you can actually build free units out of the land factory, if I'm not totally mistaken. T3 mass extractors provide a 25% discount in their adjacency bonus. So the four mass extractors will make for free units out of there. All they cost is build time, but you do lose the adjacency bonus of the storage. So they're not exactly free. Um, all in all, it works out okay. Someone did the math one time on whether or not you could reclaim free units from a quadruple adjacency factory and actually make mass off that factory. And the answer is actually no, not unless you have perfect micro and a lot of APM to spend. And even then your gains are minuscule because you're missing those storages, missing out on the adjacency bonus there. Sky out moving forward. He has the gun upgrade, which is gonna let him toasty fry all of the tanks coming in to meet him. He's gonna have a lot of crispy wreckage to reclaim and those T1 forces are going to be forced back. It looks like Nekulich is also advancing without the gun upgrade, but advancing nonetheless with his little group of Mantis there. He's gonna snag some of that reclaim as he pushes up and establish a presence in, in the middle of the map. And this is exactly what I fear. Gently is grabbing both expansions. That is not good news at all. That means that there is going to be a massive economy advantage for the left-hand team later on in the game. Supreme Burger moving in. Looks like Nekulich is going to forego any upgrades on his ACU in favor of getting a hop light out. So that's going to be T2 land. Yep, no upgrades there. Let's take a look at Supreme Burger. He does have the gun upgrade. So things are about to get hairy for the left side team. Looks like, yes. Headphone guy also has the gun upgrade. And what is this? Nexus of Reality is out front. He does not have the gun upgrade, but his ACU is out there. So we have three ACUs pushing the middle out, and two of them have the gun upgrade. Looks like Nekulich is going to use that handy-dandy one build power on the Mantis and snag that gun upgrade for himself. Yes, that is a gun upgrade. Minus nine mass. And DB is going to close with Sky out. So... This is probably going to run Sky over because he has no supporting units, no point events, nothing really in the base to help out. Thankfully, his teammate is going to push some hoplites over. And that is going to take some of the bite out of this attack, but unfortunately not enough, I think. Plus, the area effect from those hoplites is damaging the ACU as well. Headphone guy is going to score a kill here, I think. The wreckage is piling up. A lot of it is sky outs. He has no combat units left except for those couple little tanks on the south side. So the front is falling down. Nekulich getting forced back as well. He's got two versus one on this side. Sky out is doomed. Doomed, I say. And he is about to go poof. There's the kill and kaboom. No more sky out. So that leaves three versus two. Nekulich is a pretty dang good front player though, I gotta say. So it's going to be a toss up as to whether or not he dies. The best thing, the absolute best thing that the right side team could do at this exact moment is to go all in on this ACU. They have a half health gun comm, a full health gun comm, which is shedding health at the moment because he's engaged with the ACU, and a nearly full health T1 commander, which could combined easily stamp out Nekulich as a player. But it looks like they're going to hang back a little bit. Whether or not they're fearful of the T2, I do not know. Looks like Nekulich has realized that he could potentially lose his base here. And he does have another factory built north in this expansion slot. I'm surprised that these aren't getting reclaimed. Like, there's not a whole lot of actual reclaim going on with this. And I had no idea that you could build a factory down in the crater. Don't know what the advantage is, but it does fit quite nicely. The Aeon with that round aesthetic appeal is going to fill out that crater quite nicely. Nekulich moving back out front, playing the hyper-aggressive role with his commander, which you basically have to do when you're cyber. You gotta dive in, take advantage of that higher regen to 
basically take for granted that you're going to gain health faster than the other guy and just get out there and play your comm to its fullest potential. The problem is that DB is still lurking around on the south side with all of his T1 units and now Supreme Burger is moving forward, getting a little bit braver, a little bit bolder. Of course, I would too if I had that much more than the other team combined. Looks like we're going to have a counter-offensive down here from Nekulich trying to wipe out this expansion. He has T2 versus the entirely T1 horde of Headphone Guy. And that does mean that he is going to be able to wipe out that expansion, eliminate those mass extractors, deny that to the right hand team we got point defense and anti actually no it's exclusively anti-air torch going down for nexus of reality and why would he be doing that well because there's a t2 factory over here for gently who is actually building a mercy as we speak the mercy the bane of the forward commander's existence all you need is a single t1 anti-air and you can kill those things but if you don't have any anti-air your ACU is a walking dead man if you're out front. So, Nekulich is able to fire without taking fire in return due to a lack of intel, it appears. And Supreme Burger is going to start throwing down more anti-air turrets as they move in this direction. So, it looks like they are trying to coordinate some form of snipe, but I just don't know that it is actually going to happen. Gently continuing to drop these outside expansions. His eco is easily double Nexus of Realities. He is 65 maintained, 70 with reclaim versus 35 and 38 for Nexus of Reality. And then everybody else is trailing far, far behind that. Supreme Burger only has 13 and he's about to lose part of that, it looks like, to those Mantis moving up. Nexus of Reality and Headphone Guy pinning down. Necklace, they are taking fire from the rear. A couple of Rhinos in the back there. Never underestimate the damage that a Rhino can do because they can be quite brutal. Nekulich barely escaping with 2200 health. He has got to step carefully because one wrong move and he will get taken out. Headphone guy down to 3000 health, picking up a veterancy and back up to 5k. The strategic overcharge is doing a lot of good for his health count, but he is down to 3k again. Rhinos you underestimate them a lot because you think like pillars with the UEF, but rhinos cost more. Therefore, they have more damage packed into a smaller number of units. And I myself have underestimated them quite a number of times. I do think Nekulich has come, well, no, he's got to make 10 kills for veterancy or 10 badges rather, which um, T2 units are worth more than that. 59 to 65 down to 1,600 health, continuing to back up. And he is going to gain the veterancy. 13, 12, 11, and 4. There we go. Out of harm's way. But he is going to be losing his base, I think. He's had to back up a little too far. Headphone Guy and Supreme Burger are both firing away at his home base here. Going to take out some power, do some damage to all of this other infrastructure. Things are not looking good at all for Nekulich. He does still have these units in the north, but I just don't see how he's going to pull out of this. Gently still running away with Eco, though, pulling in 66 per tick. All of his assistants on that T2 air factory, and his commander is moving out to the front. I bet you he has the double gun. Yes, he does. That is going to allow him to throw down a lot of extra damage from the outside edge. It will eliminate Rass as an option, though, because his commander's going to be out front. So he's going to have to play it carefully. See what happens. He has more T2 power going up. So he's going to be pulling a total of 2K off the T2P gens and shielding those in order to stay afloat. He does have some mercies, but there's interceptors coming in from Nexus of Reality. Nexus actually doing his job as an air player now. He's got T3 land on the field, which is going to make life highly difficult. But the air is going to go down. So many anti-air torts out here, though. Orange is way too far out front. Supreme Burger is prime. Oh, my goodness. Get in there. You could have killed him. No. 
I'm gonna fly around the north side. Supreme Burger was ripe for the killing. And those mercies are just going to zip around to the north side and try to do something. I don't know what. That was a huge, huge missed opportunity there for Gently. I don't think there's any way that those anti-air torrents could have killed the mercies because they would have been coming in from just outside of range. Five mercies, that would have been 20... Fourth, uh, no, hold on. That would have been 10,000, 12,000 something damage. So that would have been enough to kill that ACU. Yeah, we just witnessed the throwaway of a potential win there. Mercies are going to come in, fly directly over some anti air somewhere, I thought. Some of them went down and land against the shield in vain. That was, that was very sad. That makes my heart sad. Ah, why? Tanks being moved in from the outside edge. There is no more use for combat units out there. So that transport's going to move them in. Hopefully they can help with the fight in the middle. And it looks like Nekulich is going to get shoved out of his base here unless he does have some point defense going online. So if he gets the point defense up, he's able to kill off those pillars, which really are not able to kill point, Tech 1 point defense at all because they always hit the walls. He may be able to save his base, but that is a big fat maybe. He has a T2 HQ, but no, or T2 support, but no HQ, so he's not going to be able to make T2 units. Nekulich falling back. He's got all five veterancy on his commander, so no more health recovery for this guy. But he has been able to overcharge the vast majority of the units with the assistance of Gently. Supreme Burger saying, we have to make T3 air soon. I would have to agree with him on that one. Loyalists moving around the far outside edge. It looks like they are going to attempt to skirt the base. If those get up into the air base, this is going to be disastrous. There will be no way for Gently to recover. Gently still pulling in 79 mass per tick. Nexus of Reality pulling 111, but that is a false number. It looks like he is pulling 95? Nope, 43. There we go. The reclaim ended, and it is actually 43. So we are good. He has still got about double the eco of the next guy. The Loyalist coming in versus Gently. There is a good overcharge. One of them going down, and there is a second. The range on that commander is brutal. You can stand right in the middle here and cover the entire entrance without really moving at all. Those tanks still in the back there. Hey, look! Building the land factory down in a ditch actually wasn't that bad of an idea because the tanks can't hit it. What do you know? So much anti-air, my word. That is a T2 commander, gonna finally start putting down some point defense. I do realize that it has 18,000 health, but that is an indication of high veterancy, not high tech. Gently throwing down a couple of T1 point defense to help lock down his area, and he is building oblivions. So he's gonna try to lock this down and turtle up as much as he can. Got multiple T2 gens going online, and he is building a strat bomber, but he is stalling hard for power at the moment, I'm sure. Yes, minus 2k, losing out on mass potential. It does look like Nekulich is using this reclaim wisely, though, and building up some units to help eliminate all of those tanks. Actually, the back end of this base is wide open. If he were theoretically to wing around the outside edge, by the time all of these units came to help, he could probably do a ton of damage. And then with the amount of eco that Gently has off to the sides, I think they still have a reasonably good chance on this one. T2P Gen still going down. Where did that Strat Bomber go? Ah, there it is. I'm looking at it and I don't even see it. Strat Bomber going around the outside edge that is probably going to head back to the base. There is a single Sam in the back which is enough to knock that strap bomber offline and I don't think it has been scouted yes it has but he does know it's back there don't fly your little strap bomber in range of the Sam and you will be fine another Sam going up in the front Nexus of Reality no doubt knows that he is in trouble if a strap bomber starts coming around the strap bomber is going to wing around and head for red but up on the front here, Gently's trying to snag an upgrade, and he is in probably the worst possible place for it. Strap Bomber winging back around, and looks like those Interceptors are going to be on it and score a kill. 
bombing out those T3 engineers there. Nekulich backing up still and gently taking fire now, but those Oblivion turrets are doing work. Eight kills apiece. Strap Bomber knocking out a T2 mechs. It is going to go down to that next Sam volley, though, and down she goes. So, so sad. Nekulich falling back, now taking fire from Loyalist Headphone Guy and Supreme Burger moving into the base, and here is exactly what I was talking about. All those Medusas in the back going to wreck. Absolutely demolish Supreme's eco. eco. Nekulich looks like he has the stealth upgrade as well, which makes that commander much more dangerous. And he does have overcharge, thanks to a bit of overflow and a storage from Gently. Gently down to 2300 health, though. Ouchie wawas, they've got to do something about this. They've now got the two ACUs moving into the base. He has got to run for the hills. Because all they have to do is move up and focus fire him, and he is done for. Nequilich tanking the damage, trying to stand in the way of Headphone and Supreme Burger. T1 point defense going to go down to an overcharge. Oblivion turrets going up in the back. That is about the best response you can ask for, but this is going to be a tight one. Tanks moving into the back, going to eliminate that threat, but not before every single mass extractor goes down. Supreme Burger pulling in a whopping three mass per tick. And that is from Reclaim, it looks like. Back here on the front, gently moving back down. Looks like Nekulich is just going to eat it. 500, 300, and overcharge for the win. That is that. And that's going to shred some of the health off of those ACUs. Down to 8,700 and 5,000. We're really watching Titans at war here. When you have ACUs use that aggressively, they always vet up, rack up those massive HP numbers. Scout's coming out now to get some eyes on these ACUs because Gently has to be able to see them to hit them. Oblivion Turret's still going down. I think they will be able to force the ACU's back because they just cannot tank all of the damage dished out by those point defense, but the base is in shambles. Power down. Still got the T3 HQ and a lot of point defense, but so much of the eco is damaged now. Headphone guy is advancing maybe a little too far, I think. We have Mercy's producing. Well, we may have a point blank Mercy here, but it may not be necessary. Because Headphone Guy is going to walk directly into the Oblivion Turrets. Why? Why would you do such a thing? Oh my word, that was, that was terrible. Alright, Gently is now pulling in 89 mass per tick and 1000 power. Nexus of Reality just popped the T3 air upgrade. So I think... The right-hand team is going to win, but man, that was a close one. Still got some loyalists moving up to the front, but there's no base left at all. There's two ACUs out in the front, highly exposed, but there are SAMs, so I don't think Mercies are going to be an issue. Loyalists moving up, tanks moving up. That was well played by the right-hand team. Very, very nicely done. I think that slip up with the mercies on this side cost gently this game because if he would have mercyed those guys as soon as he could he had a wide open window of opportunity where he could have eliminated a player and that would have worked out so much better for him in the end but as things stand he's going to lose a mass extractor lose some point defense Loyalist coming in, trying to overcharge. The EMP stun on that ACU is just too much. And... Oh, he's going to escape it by the hair of his teeth. That was a terrible mixed up metaphor. Holy cow. Missed it by a hair. Escaping by the skin of his teeth or escaping by the hair on his chin. And I just somehow combined all of this. All of you English people, I am so terribly sorry. I know that was mentally traumatizing, and I may have scarred myself too. Ah. Supreme taking an upgrade. We got Sam's going down right there. That's pretty much going to lock down any possibility of using air. Gently skirting in just a tiny little bit too close to those tanks. He doesn't quite have his fifth veterancy yet, but he's three kills off of it. That is going to do it. 6,500 health popped up. 
And Strat Bomber coming in. Gently going to take that one to the face. Two more passes and he is dead. <clears throat> Throwing down a Sam. Does he have enough power to run a shield? That is the question. No, he does not. So he's running towards the Strat Bomber. That is going to delay the inevitable by a little bit. Switch one's going to try to go after it, but so many Sam's just going to go down immediately. There's the stun from that Loyalist. You know, the stun from the Loyalist combined with the Strat Bomber could be the end of this commander. 4,000 health, 1,400, 12, 8. Get that overcharge. What? Oh, ha, eco mod. Pausing all of his stuff. And there is the killing blow. Strat Bomber landing the shot. That was actually surprisingly evenly matched at the end there. Again, storing up mercies, but there was really no point at all in that. At all. Unpaused everything instead of paused. Okay, so he was trying to manually pause, and he ended up completely stalling himself out right there at the end. All right, well played, both teams. There were some errors made from each of these guys just a little bit, and some very unique play that went into that one. This map brings out the weirdest sides of people. Like, I don't, I, I guess just because the fronts are so close together that it promotes the hyper-aggressive gameplay. But there's a lot of really cool games floating around on this map. You might want to pick it up if you haven't quite yet. The name is Darkfall, once again, and it is a dang good one. Alrighty, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this cast. I have two videos that I want you to look at. One of them, it is almost the one-year anniversary of Vijanic taking over Forged Alliance Forever. I actually had an interview with him, and the link is on the left side of the screen right here. Um, basically I just sat down and talked with him for about 30 minutes, answered, got the answers to a lot of the questions that a lot of people ask me about the community, about the client, all that kind of thing. If you're interested in some backstory on the client, some information, a lot of, uh, technical talk and just bouncing around ideas and you want to watch a point of view game from me. And go ahead and click that link. And then on the right side of the screen, I have the first ever RTS game review that I have done. I need your constructive criticism on it. Even if you don't necessarily want to listen to what I have to say about that game specifically, if you're a fan of the channel and you want to help me improve, then give me your thoughts on my presentation. How well I spoke, how well I went through the details of the game, the items that were presented, and how accurate you think they were. I can use your input on it because I would like to expand that side of the channel that is hopefully the first of many, many game reviews to come. All right, without further ado, I'm going to end this video there. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next cast.